Now we're ready to lay out the first exterior wall. We're marking the top and bottom plates where the studs will go and the openings for the windows and doors. And the first one's two feet 11 and a half inches from the wall yeah, out okay. to the beginning of the rough opening. Two and feet. Oh. Two feet 11 and a half inches. Got it. And three feet two and three eighths inches for the rough opening. Okay. What was that again? Two, three feet two and three eighths inches. There are basically two types of walls in a house, load-bearing and non-load-bearing walls, and they're built a little bit differently. The outside walls of a house are almost always load-bearing walls, like this one. So if you've got an opening for a window, you've got to support the wall above it. And for this, you'll need what's called a header. The header gets shorter studs to support it. These studs are called jack studs or trimmers. The studs on either side of those, the longer ones, are called king studs. Now, as you can tell, we've nailed the trimmer to the king stud before we set it in place. Your architect or draft person can size your header for you. Of course, the size will depend on how wide your opening is and the type of load the top of the wall has to carry. Now, our header, let's this out here a second. Our header is made up of two two by sixes with a two by six nailed on the bottom to bring it out to the full width of our two by six wall. For basic framing, you use 16 penny cement coated nails, two into the end of each stud through the plate. We prefer using our regular 16 ounce hammers, but some folks like using a heavier 20 ounce framing hammer. Either way, it's pretty hard work. We'll switch over to an air nailer pretty soon. To finish off our window opening, we put a sill in across the bottom of our opening. This is supported by shorter cripple studs. We also nail cripples in between the header and the top plate. These cripples transfer the weight of the wall above the window onto the header. The studs above and below the window are on the standard 16 inch on center spacing, even though the trimmers may be spaced differently. Okay, Can should we slide, slide this over? Yeah. Well, once we have the wall all assembled, we slide it into position here, and then we'll nail it down to hold it in place so we can square it up. Okay, let me just pull it over this way. Okay. Okay. Right there, that should yep. do it. The trick to squaring a rectangular wall is to measure the two diagonals. If they're the same, then they're square. Okay, 166 and a quarter. That's good. 166 and a half. So we have to okay. kick this over. Let's let's try that one. How's that? 16638. I think that probably did it. Check yours. Probably. Then I'll go ahead and. Yep, that's fine. Okay, I'll toll nail this in over here. So it stays, doesn't move around. Well, this is a sheathing we're going to be using. It's oriented strand board, basically the same thing we used for the subfloor, except this is only a half inch thick. It isn't three quarter like the subfloor. Now we built the first section wall over here, which is really part of a longer wall. So we went ahead and laid out this, this second section here. And uh, once we get all the sheathing down, we'll separate these apart. Say, so we want uh, this flush up here on the top, don't we? Oh, that's right. We're going to leave the gap down on the bottom. OK, okay right. that's right. Pull that up here. So we'll separate the two walls apart and then lift them independently, because it would just be way too heavy to try to lift the whole thing at once, which is a real common thing to do when you just have a couple people framing. We didn't nail down this middle piece of sheathing here because it's covering the joint between the two walls. So we'll move this over here now so we can lift up the wall. Okay, y'all set there, are the nails out? Yep. Okay, so we have our braces here, level, sledge. I think we're all set to go. Okay. One, two, three, lift. Oh. Oh. Got it, got it. It's always heavier than you think, huh? Yeah. As we lift the wall, the bottom is held in position by the toenails. But as soon as we can, we accurately position the bottom and nail it into the deck, trying to drive the nail into the top edge of the rim joist. 
Then we attach some temporary braces from the top of the wall to a block nailed into the subfloor. You may also be able to nail the bottom of the brace to a rim joist. Before we secure the brace, we plumb the wall. Okay, Robin, this way just a little bit. A little, okay. little bit, a little bit more. Okay, right there. Okay, let me get this thing over here. Hold that in place there, Robin. Our next few walls will go in quickly, especially since we've switched over to the power nailer. These walls already have the cap plates attached to them. The cap plate is an extra 2 by that goes on top of the wall. We always run the cap plates so that they cover the joints between wall sections. That's why it's usually simpler to put them on after the walls are up. Where two walls come together in a corner, you have to put in some special framing. You can see now that the extra studs and the blocking between them give you a surface to nail the adjacent wall onto. It will also give you a surface inside on each wall to nail the drywall onto later on. In addition to making all the walls plumb, we also check any long walls and make sure that they're straight. All of this is so that our roof trusses will sit on the walls properly. We also need to fill in the missing sheathing at the bottom of our walls. This covers the gap at the bottom and the rim joists. Our rim joists are covered with foam insulation, so we have to use long nails to secure the sheathing. Now that's a quick look at exterior walls in new construction. But a lot of do-it-yourself framing involves interior walls in existing spaces, like lower level. So here's how to build some of those. In this basement, we're building short walls out of 2 by 2s to go against the half-height block walls. We apply construction adhesive to the floor where the wall will sit. Okay. Go down. Then we tilt it up and use a powder actuated nailer to drive special nails through the plate and into the concrete floor. We also nail small treated blocks across the ledge and into the exterior wall framing. This helps keep the top of the wall in place. In some spaces, you won't have room to tilt up walls. In that case, you'll have to put the pieces of the wall together in place. This is sometimes called stick framing. I snapped a chalk line on a concrete floor where the framing will be, and I apply construction adhesive to the floor between the line and the wall. Then I set the bottom plate on the floor and secure it with a powder actuated nailer. I use a level and a straight 2x4 to mark the location for the top plate on the underside of the joist. I do this at both ends of the wall and then snap a chalk line between them. I nail the top plate up into the joist along this line. Now I'm ready for the studs. Since the flooring and the ceiling might not be straight and level, I measure the studs one at a time. I set the 2x4 on the bottom plate, mark where it crosses the top plate, and cut it off the mark. Then I hammer it into place and toenail it into the plates. I'm using 2x4s for this wall. A 2x4 wall is easier to insulate and install electrical in. But a 2x4 wall does eat up a little bit more floor space than a 2x2 wall. 